Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Laura. This is Spock. Uh, he's joining us. He's a very shy dog, so I'm surprised he's joining us today, but just enjoy it. Uh, today, I thought I would show off my philodendron collection, and I have done a video like this before, but it was actually my first YouTube video, and it's kind of embarrassing, so maybe don't go watch that one. But since making that video, I got a lot of philodendron because I had an import come in and those were mainly philodendron and those are all doing really well. So I'd like to show them and talk about them. This is honestly one of my favorite types of videos to watch from other people. Um, just people showing off their philodendron collection or their Hoya collection because I think people just light up as they talk about their favorite plants and that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I will say that this, this video risks being on the longer side. So if you have some housework to do, maybe do it while watching, or maybe you have a snack, do something. This might go on for a while, uh, just because I have a few to show off and I sometimes get chatty about them. Most of my philodendron live in this room. This is my living room. So I'm hoping I can just talk about most of them from my couch. That works well for me. Hopefully it works well for you. This is my philodendron silver sword. And as you can see, it is huge. I can't really take credit for how huge it is. This is the newest leaf. Still hardening off. I can't really take credit for its size. Um, I bought it already really huge. It was a steal of a deal from Home Depot and I love it. Um, there's a tinier silver sword growing there we go, growing in the bottom there. Uh, that was another plant that I had when I purchased this one and I combined them. This one was really struggling. The little one was really struggling for a long time. I think I had it in pretty poor soil. I'm hoping it will take off, but once I planted it in here, the leaves kind of just died and now it's just a stem but it's a healthy stem and there are a couple growth points. So I think it will grow in. We're doing our best. Um, I also have a baby silver sword. One second. Here's the baby silver sword. This was just a little wet stick that I think I knocked off of that smaller plant. I don't, maybe when I planted that smaller, I'm not sure. This was some type of wet stick that I had because of an accident. And so I propagated it in perlite, just in a container of perlite. And now I planted it into soil, obviously. And it's so cute. It looks wet. I don't know. This isn't a new leaf. Well, it's not that new. Anyway, super adorable. Okay. Next up is my philodendron gloriosum. This leaf is absolutely stunning. This leaf is not stunning, but it's okay. I got this plant in the import that I received um, and this was the leaf that was on the import. So it's kind of to be expected that it would be struggling, but this new leaf makes up for it. And there is a spike. There's a new leaf coming in slowly. I have this plant in medium light. I just have it kind of behind there by the Monstera. So it's getting quite, you know, kind of bright light, but no direct light. That's apparently the way to go for these guys. I haven't, I mean, I only, I have only gotten this new leaf. So I can't really say that I'm an expert about growing this plant or anything but I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the velvet and I'm so excited that there's a new leaf coming in. Next up is my Philodendron Golden Goddess, also known as Lemon Lime Upright. This is such a gorgeous plant. I recently, okay. So this was growing on a moss pole and I have like four or five stems here. They're all growing up the moss pole, doing pretty well, putting out new leaves. But then I just found that it started to look more moss pole than plant, if you know what I mean. I feel like the, the first thing you saw was the moss pole and that's just not a look I love. So I decided to take it out and attach it just to this uh, orchid support orchid skewer. When I took the moss pole out, the bottom of the moss pole was rotten. Like it was all soft, disintegrating, rotting, decomposing. And I wonder if that was negatively affecting the plant because the plant was 
often dropping leaves and I kind of just thought that was because of winter. Now it is thriving and putting out like these new leaves just came out. There's new leaves coming here. So I don't know if that's spring or changing of the moldy pole. Something to look into. If you're growing all your plants on moss poles, make sure they're not rotting. I don't have a ton of moss poles. It's not really my thing, but sometimes you need to attach your plant to something and it was working for a while. I, I don't know, maybe that was just a poorly made moss pole, I'm not sure. But uh, it's doing a lot better now. I love this plant so much. I have taken many, many propagations from it, many, many chop and prop because I just find it grows so fast and everyone likes receiving a cutting of this plant because it's so neon and happy. I love wherever I put it in my collection. I just feel like it draws the eye. It's like a pop of extra bright color and it just makes me really happy, especially now that it's thriving and doing better and doesn't have a huge moss pole taking away from its beauty. Up next is Philodendron Dark Lord. I love the name of this plant and it is so accurate. I recently chopped the top off this plant and made a cutting and sold it, but there is new growth coming in. New leaves come in bright, shiny, not bright, like shiny burgundy, and then they turn black, basically, dark, dark lord. This plant can get huge, and I look forward to it getting huge. I, I got this in the import as well, and I wasn't necessarily like, this was not a highlight for me in the import, but it's grown on me, and I feel like these big black heart leaves are super unique and gothy, and I think this will quickly become one of my favorites. And it's kind of a statement piece. You can just put this anywhere and like, wow, what is that? So Philodendron Dark Lord, definitely um, more difficult to find, but if you find one, I highly recommend it. This is different than Philodendron Black Cardinal, but it's similar. And Black Cardinal is a lot easier to find. I had one, but it died, but uh, the leaf color is the same, but the leaf shape is different. Okay, this is one that I show off often, I feel like, because it's just so huge and easy to care for. This is Philodendron Rojo Congo. I feel like I've talked about it recently, so I don't have a ton to say. Uh, it does have a new leaf coming in, and these leaves also come out sort of shiny red and then turn this darker green color. I think this is a super easy to care for plant. It doesn't need a ton of light, as I've said before. So if you do see this one, I highly recommend it if you have the room. It gets huge really quickly, uh, so just make sure you are prepared for that. I do shine these leaves with neem oil because I find that they just look so incredible when they're shiny, um, but obviously you could just like wipe them off too, but I sort of take very good care of these leaves because they are so gorgeous when they're shiny. Next plant, uh, okay. Next plant is my Philodendron Plamanii. I feel like this plant doesn't really need any <laughs> Any extra words? Obviously this is a huge statement plant and I love it a lot. It This was in the import as well and just really took off. Um, this is the newest leaf. So you can see it's a little bit lighter in color and then we'll darken to this color and there's another leaf coming in, which is um, hard to believe. I, there is roots coming out the bottom, so I know I'm gonna have to repot this soon. It's obviously a huge plant. This is a philodendron that creeps, meaning that it grows sideways. The stem, can't really see here, but the stem grows sideways instead of upwards. So I was actually thinking of getting like a rectangular pot because that way it can grow in its natural growth pattern. Um, but I guess, I don't know, rectangular pots are kind of hard to find. I haven't seen one that I love, but 
just a terracotta, a rectangular terracotta would work. So I will just look harder um, because this is gonna need to be repotted soon. But right now it is doing so well. I don't keep this under a grow light. I keep it right beside this north facing window. There's just a shelf behind where the camera is. And it just soaks up the sun and has been growing so well. I really hope that it just keeps going and slowly takes over my living room. This, this Plamanii, uh, when I look at other photos online, I feel like my Plamanii has more silver, um, which is more similar to the Pastazanum, I think. But all plants are different, right? They all have slightly different genetics from, well, unless it's a clone, but they, they differ. So I'm not sure if you know more about like the families of philodendrons and all their breeding and all that, you could let me know. But I know that it, if it has this like um, wavy petiole, that means that it's a plowmanii, I think, versus a pastazanum. I think that's one of the main ways to know the difference. Anyway, I'm kind of blathering. There's not much to say about this plant other than it's gorgeous. Okay, next up is this mixed pot of philodendron lemon lime and philodendron brazil. They are basically just different variegation patterns of the same plant. So I combine them into one and we'll see. Is that a bug? Not a bug, just soil. I find that neon, philodendron, neon philodendrons or this philodendrons that are this bright yellow green color attract bugs more than other philodendrons. It's a theory that I have that maybe thrips like this color what do you think? So that, that's a thing, right? Plants attract certain bugs based on their colors. But I do find that this plant and my upright lemon lime or the golden goddess tend to get bugs first, if that makes sense. But maybe that's just me being paranoid. Anyway, this is a gorgeous plant. It's not growing super quickly for me. I have it under a grow light, which maybe is almost making it grow slower. I'm not sure. Um, it is putting out new leaves, but it's just not growing as quickly as I thought it would at this time of year, but that's fine. I'm sure it will snap back to life pretty soon. It's still very early spring, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, not much to say about this plant. I love philodendron brazils when they're big and bushy and trailing down. This one isn't quite there yet, but I know it will get there soon. I just, uh, I did have a bushy Brazil like that and it did get thrips, which sort of supports my theory that thrips like that color, but we'll see. Super cute though. Okay, next up is my newest plant. This is Philodendron Moonlight. I just got this plant two weeks ago. It was pretty cheap, but again, this neon green yellow color uh, might get thrips, I guess, but I just, I'm really into this neon color right now, apparently. It matches my nails as well. Uh, I had a philodendron moonlight a while ago. I got it on Facebook Marketplace and it had thrips. I don't know that it had thrips when I bought it, I think it did though. And I didn't notice the thrips for a long time, but the plant just wasn't thriving. Every time it would put out a new leaf, the new leaf would just kind of sit there and do nothing. And when I really looked at it, I did find thrips basically everywhere in the plant. So I just threw out the plant. I find sometimes when there's a really big infestation, there's no point, you know, really trying to save the plant. Anyway, so I found this one and I was so happy to replace that plant. This one is very healthy, no thrips, no bugs. And um, this leaf just unfurled since I brought it home. It had already, you know, the leaf had started in the nursery and unfurled once I got it home. So that was really nice. I love this neon color. It obviously will fade eventually to this pretty green. And these plants can get pretty large as well. I, I'm really excited to see this one grow. There is like another baby already, sort of an offset growing out the side. So this has the potential to get really huge eventually, which I'm really excited about. Okay, next up is my very underwhelming Philodendron Pink Princess. There's a little bit of pink on that leaf, as you see. Um, but otherwise, this plant, 
has been underwhelming. I was hoping that I would have this huge hot pink plant, just not really the reality of my pink princess. And I think that's the reality for a lot of people who are growing this plant. It just can be really underwhelming. I recently took some cuttings and I'm propagating those in LECA. That's gonna be another video. That's a whole other experiment um, in the hopes of getting new leaves with more pink. I've tried to research a lot about how to bring that variegation back. It has to do with looking at the stem and all that. That's, that's information for another video. But um, while this plant is really beautiful, I love the dark leaf. I love the little bit of pink. I think people need to know that sometimes this is what your pink princess is gonna look like. Uh, I think most people's pink princess is not this huge, thriving, hot pink plant. It looks something like this for a lot of people. And as long as you're okay with that, I think if you can get a really good deal on a cutting, great. But spending tons of money on, you know, like an unrooted cutting or a wet stick when this is maybe all you're gonna get for a couple years, um, I think that's something that people should know about when they buy these propagations. Because it's definitely, uh, it's been an experience. It's been a little bit of a learning experience. I spent more than I normally would spend on a plant cutting to get this plant cutting just because it was uncommon. And yes, it's beautiful. It's been a really fun experiment. I'm really enjoying um, trying to get more pink. That's fun. But I just don't know that it's worth the price. I don't know that pink princesses are worth the price that they often are being sold for. I think if you can get a good deal, awesome. Or if you want to buy a huge one, then yeah, it's probably worth the price. But they grow slow and they don't always have a ton of pink. Even if you get a stem with some variegation, all of that, like you sometimes might just have a plant like this and just, I hope everyone is okay with that if they're spending large amounts of money on their cuttings. This on the other hand is a plant that will not disappoint you. This is Philodendron Painted Lady. These leaves have the most beautiful variegation. They're all slightly different. Some of them are getting like this pink, orangey line down the middle. I don't know. I feel like this is a really gorgeous plant, possibly kind of underrated, because it looks like a watercolor. I mean, I see why it's called a painted lady. This plant, I also got in the import. Well, actually, this is two plants. I got one on Facebook Marketplace and one in the import. Both of them are doing really well. I actually don't know which is which at this point. They've kind of melded together in there. Some, there is some new leaves coming out that are super, super tiny. See like this little leaf is so tiny. I don't know why some of them are coming out so tiny, but it, it also has put out a ton of larger leaves. So I think, yeah, this plant, I definitely, if you see one on Marketplace or something, you should definitely get one. The stems are pink and then they have like pink lines through the middle. Absolutely gorgeous. Another plant that does not disappoint, Philodendron Paradiso Verde. Insane leaves. Look at that. It's like mottled green and each leaf is different. I have a couple of these going. I keep propagating them and just this one has a big leaf coming out. I'm so excited. Uh, and they're funny, like one of my shown this off recently, but one of them, one of the propagations has no variegation. So I'm not sure if it needs more light, less light. I'm trying to figure that out. I'm sure it's fine. Like this new leaf has barely any variegation and I'm not sure about that. I think I, I'll just have to see. We'll have to see as the plants mature or as the leaves mature, if they get more variegation, like does that come in later? Because I got this from the import, I don't know a ton about how to grow it just yet but because it's been growing so quickly, I have been propagating it and just learning as I go. Okay, next up are my philodendron birkins. I love these plants. I talk about them a lot because they're just easy care, but also so stunning. So stunning. I have two because why not? These are really easy to find right now. They grow easily. They have absolute, like, I just water them. That's all I do. This one has a huge leaf coming out and they just grow. They don't get a ton of light and yet they're still so variegated. I find you just have to find one you like at the store because based on the genetics, like these look very different. 
well, to me, they look different. Maybe to some people, they look exactly the same. But if you find one in the store that you just love the look of, probably it will keep growing that way. I find that the stripies are more based on genetics than on light or different, you know, situations in your environment. I think if you like the look of the one you buy, probably you'll like it for a really long time because that's the kind of leaf it's gonna put out. This one has like a lot more white and these leaves they are a bit longer with really, really distinct stripes. And yeah, does not get a ton of light at all and continues to put those out. So highly recommend, these are highly recommended for beginners, highly recommended for people that don't have a ton of light in their house because they are so easy to grow. Okay, next up is my Philodendron Prince of Orange. And I think because it's winter, it's not really putting out those bright orange leaves. They're more like pinkish red. This plant definitely needs bright light to create the orange leaves. So this does sit under a grow light in my house. Uh, I used to have it basically in a dark corner and it was growing, but just didn't have any orange, which is the point of the Prince of Orange. We want those orange leaves. And then I learned that you need to put it under bright light. So since then it has had a lot more red and a lot more orange. I'm not sure why there's no orange at the moment. There's some new leaves coming in, of course. They're more pinky red at this point, which is okay, I'm not worried. This was a wish list plant for me for a long time. And then once I got it, there was like no orange leaves. So I had to learn that really it needs that bright light to have the beautiful orange leaves. And yeah, I absolutely love this plant. I find sometimes the leaves are a little bit curled in on themselves and they don't really, like this one has never really straightened out even though it's definitely an older leaf. So that I'm not sure if that's a humidity issue. It doesn't get a ton of humidity. So maybe that's the problem. Maybe I should set something up for it. But it's, it's healthy, it's happy, I have no complaints, except for those curling in leaves. And I'm gonna try and solve that problem <laughs> soon. But absolutely gorgeous, Prince of Orange. These are my Philodendron Mykins cuttings. I had this plant growing up a trellis for a long time, but then I just didn't really like the look of it. And so it was just one stem growing up the trellis. So I decided to take it off the trellis and cut the stem into three different cuttings. And then, so that stem is still growing in soil. And these are gonna be three more rooted cuttings that I'm gonna put into the same pot. So it'll be a more full trailing philodendron micans. I, I love these leaves. Like they're absolutely perfect. I feel like this plant often does not get the love that it should. They're absolutely gorgeous. It grows so easily. It looks beautiful trailing or climbing up. I just, I just didn't like the look of the climbing up in that particular situation. That was just my issue, but I feel like other people have climbing philodendron that look absolutely gorgeous and the leaves do get a lot larger if you let them climb. So that's a benefit of doing that. But right now I'm just feeling the trailing leaf. This leaf got thrips damage. That's, that's what that is. It's very unfortunate. You can always tell it's thrips because they like to poo all over where they damage the leaf. It's very disgusting, but it doesn't have thrips right now. It had thrips a long time ago. Okay, so the next or the last two plants I'm gonna show off, I'm not sure if they are the same plant or not. This one came in the import and it was kind of like a bonus that was included. It was called Philodendron Compact Saw. And it is very compact. This is the newest leaf that has come out and it's very tiny, but still very zigzaggy, which makes me think it is the Philodendron Tiger Tooth, which is behind me, I'm gonna talk about in a sec. Um, Philodendron Tiger Tooth, Philodendron Narrow, Philodendron Jungle Boogie, probably called Philodendron Zigzag somewhere. So I'm not sure if this is just an immature form of this or like a variation of it. I'm not sure because when I look online for Philodendron Compact Saw, which is what this was called, there's really not a lot of information. So is it the same plant? Maybe, I don't know. I have this growing in my bedroom and it does not get a ton of light in there, but it is putting out new leaves. I did not love this plant when I got it. 
but now it's kind of growing on me I like the growth patterns it kind of like shoots upwards and then sort of bends downwards it's like curving downwards which is really beautiful and very similar to the philodendron narrow behind me so really cool plant what I think is maybe different though from the philodendron narrow is that comes out from one big stem this one is all you know little shoots coming out from the base but again could just be an immature form so if you know let me know so this is my philodendron narrow or philodendron tiger tooth, philodendron jungle boogie, tons of names for this plant. Uh, the leaves are obviously so cool. I feel like it's just such a jungle vibe. And like I said, this is all growing out from one big stem. It had an accident when it fell off my shelf. So I'm propagating the top, which fell off, but that's okay. And yeah. It just grows, puts out these huge leaves constantly. There's a new leaf coming in right there. And I'm excited for this to basically take over my house because these are the vibes I'm going for. I have it in a huge pot, but then this nursery pot sits inside the big pot because obviously this is really likely to fall over, which is how it got damaged the first time. It fell right over and snapped. So be careful when you have huge plants like this, make sure that you put them in a heavy pot or something to hold them down because that was a really, really, really sad accident that I don't want to talk about right now. So is it related to that? Yeah, I don't know, like when I look at them, when I look at them side by side, this leaf, they are not as, wait, this is really hard to hold these up, but these leaves are not as wavy as these ones. So is it because it's immature? I don't know. I gotta put this down soon, but for now, I don't know if it's the same. I don't really care actually. They're both happy and they're both really beautiful, but if you know, let me know. And yeah, so those are all my philodendrons, I think. I might have missed one. If I did, it's okay. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing my collection. I hope you enjoyed Spocky joining us today. He had a lot to say. And I hope you just have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye.